Oh, hi, Doomer. It's December 1st. This is what I look like without makeup. Is it good? Is it good? Also, the lighting's kind of shabby. Maybe I just zoom this in a little bit. Something like that. Okay, so we're going to go through an article essay today together. But before we do, personally, I'm getting boosted tomorrow, and I'm totally fine with saying that I'd rather not get infected with the Omicron variant, which has just been detected in the U.S. coincidentally on the same day as AIDS Day. So we're making progress. I watch a lot of Indigo Traveler. He's another YouTuber. He's like a pretty straightforward guy. He travels to all these exotic places. I'd love to do something like that. I feel like I'm kind of approachable. Like he went to Nigeria, 20 over 25 million people, the biggest city in Africa. It's a zoo. It's a zoo. How much it takes to run places like that, it's insane. It's just insane. You don't have to go there. You can watch it online. I'm also pretty nauseated with Mr. Beast and his face. He's got the algorithm down. You know, he knows how to, it quick cuts. He's just so, like, I, I had a, oh, he's nauseating. It's nauseating. Honestly, like, fuck him. Because I don't care what he does, give philanthropy or gives out turkeys. And he'll do more in his life than any, anything here is. All he dri does a drive through, like, a thou over a million times or a thousand times, he does a video. How much, like, that's how wasteful that is. All the shit that he does. The Squid Game thing, all of that negates all of the good shit that he does. You understand that? You little fucking twink? God, I hate, I hate the virus as us. I hate our, really, we're so selfishly nearsighted. It's literally retarded. Um, so this, this gentleman, Richard Herman, just published an article in the Daily Messenger, which I'm going to read in a moment. This literally just came out this morning. What's the Daily Messenger? The Daily Messenger is an American daily newspaper published weekday afternoons and on Sundays in Canaduega, New York. I'm sure I screwed that up. It's owned by Gannett. Who's Gannett? Gannett is the largest news U.S. newspaper publisher and has made over a billion dollars in 2019. Why am I using Chrome? Get out of there. Don't use Chrome. Use DuckDuckGo. No, I use Brave. Okay, so this gentleman Mr. Herman is no, is no flock of seagulls. He's not like me, for instance. How do you know that? I mean, have you been over there? No. Well, they were here, and they said that they were going to go there. And they went. This man graduated from Yale, went to the New School University, he's got his master's, and Cornell Law School. He was the attorney at the U.S. De Department of Defense and Energy and General Accounting Office, a legal consultant at the U.S. Departments of Defense and Justice. Uh, he taught law for 10 years. He got like nominated for award. He wrote like all these 14 different books that look like technical Tom Clancy type stuff and about wars and empires and shit like that. I'm just gonna get to the, uh, get to the essay here. It's a guest opinion but he's the one person that's willing to come out and have enough balls to say what a colossal failure COP26 was. The, the headline is as follows, essay, Richard Herman, copping out on climate change. Quote, the COP26 summit brought parties together to boost action toward the goals of the U.S. Paris Climate Agreement and the U.N. Framework Convention on Climate Change. Anticipation of the Glasgow meeting raised expectations that the 197 nations present would actually achieve something concrete that would keep global warming from exceeding 1.5. It was not to be. The UN report on COP26 paints a far rosier picture of what was actually achieved than a realistic assessment report. It borders on irresponsibility because it claims, quote, the Glasgow Climate Pact keeps 1.5 alive. Yeah, yeah, we all heard that, blah, blah, blah. After that opening statement, everything that follows must be taken with the ocean of salt. COP26 failure means that the world must turn to another strategy. More on that below. So he says, to paraphrase, they heard a great deal of soaring rhetoric from world leaders about the gravity of the problem. However, nothing resulted beyond the usual pledges of billions of dollars going on. Nice words, but if the past is an in indicator, words will speak volume louder than words than any follow-up actions. The lofty rhetoric of world leaders was just that. Real action was nowhere to be found. Glasgow glossed over some of the core climate change issues. For example, nothing was said about carbon capture true similarly the worlds were, were silent about nuclear power true an essential energy source if we were to phase out fossil fuels and move to renewables two of the world's foremost greenhouse polluters china and russia didn't even bother to attend cop 26 which makes it border on meaningless without itemizing the pledge particulars suffice to say 
that the planet can no longer limit to 1.5 degrees C since the Industrial Revolution by the target date of 2030. The political will to do simply does not exist. Temperatures are certain to smash through that barrier, which climate scientists have earmarked as the point of no return. Once crossed, what that means is the climate will be out of control. COP26 was full of urgings, but not much that was tangible or enforceable. Telling was a statement in the official Glasgow report. Countries have raised their ambition. This might be the finest example of diplomatic claptrap in history. As in previous 25 climate conferences, Glasgow kicked the can down the road once again. Going into Glasgow, half the world's major economies had not even met their 2015 Paris Agreement goals, and there were no sanctions for those failures, not even a gentle tap on the risk. With this approach, the 1.5 goal is permanently out of reach. Natural disasters, more and greater fl storms, floods, forest fires, mudslides, droughts, heat waves at La will reach unheard of intensity. Entire communities will be swallowed up by rising seas. Crop yields will decline. Water shortages will become more widespread. And population displacement will affect millions of people. The world will be forced to deal with this destruction accompanied by enormous increases in the cost of cleanup and the lives and livelihoods loss. Adds to the climate chaos that many nations have been over-reporting their carbon savings, and a fact that came in the light of Glasgow, but did not make it into the UN report. There are no sanctions for climate reporting fraud. Seriously. What all this means is that it's time to turn our attention from halting and reversing global warming to mitigation. And in other words, learning to live and cope with climate change and the escalating havoc it will ensue. Translated, that means constructing barriers against rising sea levels in places like Lower Manhattan, vastly increasing federal and state budgets for the Federal Emergency Management Agency and National Guard, and enacting laws restricting residential construction in places highly prone to forest fires and beach erosion, encouraging climate migration from areas of high risk to safer locales. But none of that is being done, and everybody keeps moving to the coast. So we're painting a pretty grim picture here, guys. I feel like I've beat a dead horse, but I said this in my last video, but I'm going to say it again, that now is your fucking retirement. Not later. It's right now. What, what would you be doing if you were retired? Messing with trinkets? I'm thinking about building like a Raspberry Pi, like air quality and weather alert monitor, something like that. You know, projects, you're right. I know one of y'all said I should play an instrument. I've played a few instruments in my life. I'm just too uncoordinated. You should see my fingers when they move around on the screen and edit stuff and move the mouse. Like, it, it, it's pretty entertaining. Okay, I'm rambling. Thanks for watching. I hope you subscribe, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.